Welcome to Navigating Change, everybody. My name is Pete Wright, and I am sitting with Howard Teibel. Howard, hello. Hello, Pete. Good to talk to you again, my friend. We have a uh, we have a special guest with us uh, today who's going to join us, I believe, for the next couple of issues uh, of episodes here. Uh, Rebecca Mazone from Accounting Management Solutions. Rebecca, thank you for joining us on the show. Thank you, Pete. Happy to be here. We are talking about something that fits uh, really in your your joint areas of expertise that uh, I hope today will uh, illuminate some some issues uh, for our listeners. We're talking about the balanced scorecard. Now, the balanced scorecard, uh, you know, if you're in the world of of finance, uh, you may know something of the balanced scorecard. But the balanced scorecard has changed over the last, uh, or, or is continues to evolve, shall we say, over, you know, each year. There are new wonderful uses of the balanced scorecard. So we thought we would talk a little bit about what the balanced scorecard is uh, and how organizations are using it to the best effect and uh, and thought you guys could uh, could uh, share some of your thoughts based on your work together on on uh, on how the balanced scorecard works so let's go ahead and kick it off with that very question what is the balanced scorecard and and why is it important uh what i'd start by saying uh in in working with rebecca you know in giving these presentations is that one of the things that is so apparent and so necessary in uh, whether it's higher ed or healthcare or in corporations is tying their vision and their mission to actually find specific areas that they're going to make concrete improvements and not to have a tunnel vision view of it and I think the balanced scorecard approach allows you to look at it in a conceptually in a balanced way so I know Rebecca has many times spoken on this uh, I'm going to give her a chance just to talk about sort of the four domains of the balance scorecard. Rebecca? Yeah, great. Thank you, Howard. I, know I think it is important to note that really the reason that there is so much growth and popularity in the area of balanced scorecards is because it really is an effective way to measure the organization as a whole. So not just the financial measures and not just the outcomes, but really the relationship between the two. And every successful organization, regardless of what industry, whether it's for profit or not for profit, really has key strength in four core areas. So financial health, um, strong human resource. Um, if you think about most not-for-profit organizations of any type and size, um, we most of us really provide a service and at the core of that service is really our people. It's, it's the people that we hire that ultimately provide that service. So it's really important to have strength in that area. And then customers. So we typically don't think of the people we serve as customers, but it's interesting from a not-for-profit perspective that many times the, um, you know, the person or organization paying for the service may not be the person who's ultimately receiving the service. So when we think about a strong customer base and a quality product or service, we really have to look at it from many different perspectives to really understand who are our customers. And then of course the fourth area is operations. So we really, it's very important for us to have a very strong operational backbone. So it's its the strength in our entire process, how we carry out our day-to-day -day business and the infrastructure that supports it, such as, you know, facilities or IT. Okay, so... Uh the uh, what it sounds like to me is that that uh, balance scorecard is a is a way to get your hands around uh, an approach to continuous iteration and quality uh, in service delivery is that am, am I hearing that right absolutely and I think it's really to boil it down it's a it's a very effective way not only to measure how well you're doing in achieving your strategic goals and objectives, but it also is a way to set expectations related to your strategic goals and objectives and to drive them throughout the organization. So if done properly, every measure on, an, on a balanced scorecard at an organizational level has a link through every department and every individual through annual performance evaluations. 
when you get started on actually implementing, you know, I've seen uh, countless new measurement systems uh, being thrown into place, and and the the hue and cry time and time again is, uh, there's just yet another thing we have to, another form we have to fill out, another type of evaluation we have to we have to launch for our staff. How do you actually uh, implement Balanced Scorecard in a way that, that allows you to collect the right data, data that's going to be useful to you across you know, areas of the organization in a meaningful way um, that increases buy-in and, and ownership of everybody that, that's involved? That's a great question. The step one is that you have true leadership support. And by leadership support, support what I mean is, is that executive leadership is prepared to say this is something we're going to do, why we're going to do it, and how it's going to help us improve where we want to go. So there's there's that level of ownership that has to start. And then it needs to be taken down a level to the group who's actually going to be doing the analysis. You know, as Re- Rebecca has been working with groups many, many times, is that there are function, financial groups and there are operation groups that are required to work through these things, and that's where the work takes place. I mean, right. Isn't that your experience? I, I think it's extremely important to have representation from throughout the organization from all of the functional areas. So when you look at, for instance, an, an organization chart, but you think about it from a business process perspective, you have to have representation from all of the major areas because not having buy-in from one key area of the organization will sabotage the entire process. So when you're developing the scorecards, it is first having that leadership commitment to say, yes, no matter what, this is you know, we are going to do this and then making sure that you have representation because once when those people are involved, there is always a lot of hesitation in the beginning, concern about, um, you know, why am I being measured? What's going, you know, how are you going to use the information? Um, to measure me and make decisions about my future and my job at the organization. So there's a lot of concern where individuals has, have never been measured before. So by having key management from across the organization involved in the creation of the dashboard is extremely important to buy in. Yeah, and, the, and the thing I would add to this that Rebecca just said is then, then there's the real world piece of this, which is in some ways, uh, navigating this, uh, the way it really might play out is that you have two groups that begin and are committed and are involved in this, and they help build the momentum around other groups. It is, in my experience, I absolutely agree that you need top leadership support, but I think in some ways it's unrealistic that you're going to get across the board support and some are going to be waiting in the wings to see if this is something that's useful uh, and I think that's an important thing to keep in mind because I think some people out there might say you know what until I have full support I'm not going to start this absolutely and I think that that's why our experience working together has been so valuable in this area because when the finance department asks to other department managers to be involved in coming up with ways to measure the organization and to link the day-to-day activities to the strategic objectives of the organization, you always have individuals who are not going to participate. So it is really important to have someone else help through that negotiation process and help to really create that buy-in, having someone many times from outside the organization can be very valuable. Right. This is, uh, that, that's a very interesting point, and it, it gets to one of my biggest questions, which is, uh, you know, balanced scorecard being historically financial, there's, there, there, you know, there's, there's a certain gestalt around measuring financial data. We know what that looks like. We know that financial data gives us is, essentially historical financial performance, but the next sort of uh, the next sort of dimension that that it sounds like the balanced scorecard allows you to to deliver is connecting these uh, you know this process of financial data to capturing human performance in a way that lets you uh, essentially predict future trends. Uh, am am I am I reading that right from your conversation here? That 
Absolutely. I mean, that's probably the most valuable outcome of implementing a dashboard or a scorecard is really not just the ability to measure financial information or or just the ability to look at outcomes. And many times that's the way that we manage our organizations and we even talk to our boards and our management. It's usually in two separate pieces. Here's the financial outcomes. Here's the operational or programmatic outcomes. What this really does is it brings both of those together, but then links the two because your scorecard really needs to be focused not just on the financial outcomes, here's how much revenue we have, but really linking the relationship between that revenue and the outcomes. So if we are, if our outcomes are that we are growing and we are serving more and more students each year and our revenue is growing, are, are we, um, is the expense per student growing at a, at a faster rate? So it's really being able to predict that, yes, we're growing, but we may not be growing in the right way. And our cost structure might be growing a little bit faster than the revenue side so that we can really use that information to predict the future. So it's, it is at the same time really trying to bring both of those pieces together and present the information in a meaningful way. So I can say that for virtually all of our clients, when we look at management and when we look at boards of directors, there are very few individuals that really can look at financial statements and really understand what they mean. And this also goes to that next level and allows them to see not all financial information, but key financial information. That's really what we're talking about is taking the most important components and putting them into one place and mm. presenting them in a way that's easy to understand sure. and easy to understand the interrelationships. That's and, and, and when you have that, as I listen to Rebecca speak on this, uh, when you have that, you have the ability to have groups up and down the organization speaking the same language. Because that's the piece that I think is missing mm -hmm. so much from organizations making quantifiable progress, is that they either have a strategic plan that's not grounded in anything concrete, or they got all these plans that are not in context of their strategic plan. So the scorecard concept, and there's other concepts too, but I think our experience is this is a very effective way to get this information into a format that allows people to look at it both from the quantifiable numbers, percentages, but also to look at it, what should we be doing to get there? Mm -hmm. You know, I, and I, I don't mean to interrupt you, Howard. I, I wonder if it's if you could answer a question. Both of you have brought up uh, this this issue of dashboards, uh, and and so I wonder if you could just get a perspective from each of you on this. How much is a balanced scorecard implementation based on some silver bullet software implementation, and how much of a of, of an implementation really is is based on uh, uh, you know the real people process and the real sort of uh, intellectual muscle of, of actually getting people a knee to knee and measuring performance. I'm really glad you mentioned this, Pete, because I think that is the biggest mistake organizations make is they think if they, for example, and this happens with ERP systems and any kind of technology sure. solution, they think that if they put a piece of software in place that guides them through the process, they don't have to get people to think through it deeply about what they're trying to accomplish. That somehow the software is going to solve it. The dashboard, in a sense, is the culmination of the work that's done. It's a way that you can see the progress, and I think it motivates people to see that this is value. It helps to communicate to senior management. But ultimately, I think organizations should be very careful about putting too much emphasis on that the software is going to guide them through it versus having a process that they're going to take themselves through to tie their strategy and their mission to the actual work they're going to do. Right. That you know, there's a I have a little bit of a technology background and there's an old saying garbage in garbage out. And that is so key in this discussion. Many times um, it, you have to be very careful to make sure that you're looking at the right information if, and not too much of it. So it's if, if you 
have the ability to have a software that will give you 400 different measures, well, that's great, but you're never going to look at four different, 400 mm -hmm. different measures, let alone understand what they mean and what they're telling you. So really, it's most important to have the process in place to really understand what is it that's most important for us to measure, because many times, depending upon the size of the organization, if we're talking about a department or even a board level scorecard, we tell them that the goal should be to really look at 20 to 30 measures and really try to narrow it down to that range so it's so the um, software is an extremely valuable tool in gathering that information and making sure that you're really getting consistent measures from period to period but it's most important to make sure that you're actually getting the right measures this is such a great discussion. I feel like we've just uh, scratched the the very very tip of the iceberg here, but uh, we we have much more to talk about regarding the balanced scorecard. And uh, uh, you know, thank you, Rebecca Mazone from Accounting Management Solutions, for joining us for this series and and uh, illuminating this uh, sort of opaque uh, uh, management concepts for us today regarding the balanced scorecard. Where can people find you uh, specifically, Rebecca, if they have more questions? Well, our website has a great deal of information on this and all finance-related topics at www.amsolutions.net, and my contact information is on the website. Beautiful. And as for Howard and myself, you can find lots more information on, on uh, Tybal Inc. and the podcast at tybalinc.com. Uh, Howard, any closing remarks as we uh, get ready for our next session? Just thank you very much, Pete. And this has been a great initial collaboration to do a podcast with uh, Rebecca. Always a pleasure. Thank you so much, everybody. On behalf of Rebecca Howard and myself, Pete Wright, thank you for joining us this week for Navigating Change. Mm -hmm.